CPU core counts have been exploding over the past decade. With quad, hexa, and octa-core processors, common and relatively inexpensive configurations. Sure, towards the higher end of things, the pricing gets a bit bonkers, but down on the more reasonable side of things, what kind of CPU do you need in 2021 for not only 60Hz, but all the way up to 144 and beyond? Before digging into this video, I'm going to list some honorable mentions that I would recommend to avoid, but these things used to be pretty beastly budget chips back in the day. First up is the entirety of the FX series, which while being temptingly cheap, doesn't offer performance anywhere close to what's available in modern budget chips, and even inexpensive flagship hardware that's a few generations old. Swinging away from there, I'd also recommend to avoid any chips on the AM3 Plus platform in general. If you've got a system with one in it lying around, just collecting dust, then putting it to use isn't necessarily the worst idea, but using it to game will be a futile and warm experience that's probably going to leave you more disappointed than impressed. Also, if you're looking at building an inexpensive budget PC, might I recommend the Xbox Series S, which I've got right here. And while it's not the same as a PC, for $300 it'll blow whatever you'd be able to find out of the water especially with this beyond ridiculous graphics pricing. But without any further ado, let's get into some CPU recommendations and specific core configurations that you should be targeting in 2021. Starting off, I'm going to begin at the lower end of the spectrum and work my way up in not only price, but also performance. For our 1080p CPUs, our ultra-budget recommendations include quad-core Intel chips, specifically older i5s and i7s that while falling behind modern octa-core chips, still offer beyond impressive performance for the price you'd be paying. Heck, the i5-2500K can be found for as little as $35 in North America, and while it's not going to give you an upgrade path to a 4K-ready system, it's been going strong for close to 9 years now, and the 4 Sandy Ridge cores on offer are still powerful enough to power through games at 1080p and 60fps. The i5-3570K is also an excellent quad-core chip, and can be found for around 50 USD, which is admittedly kind of hard to justify as both of these older platforms utilize DDR3, and not to mention that the platforms offer no modern upgrade path. To help solve these issues, we're next going to take a look at some budget Ryzen chips, and the first one I need to mention is the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. While it doesn't cost $85 anymore, if you're able to find one for less than $130, it's an amazing little chip, and I have an entire video dedicated to reviewing the thing right here. Comparably priced and newer AMD chips, specifically the Ryzen 3 3200G and the Ryzen 5 3400G, make up my overall recommendation though if you're building a system on the cheap. Packing four physical cores in both chips, they also pack in relatively competent integrated graphics, which should allow for some great experiences in esports games. While yes, these chips do have limitations, the 8 threads on offer with the 3400G make me want to recommend that chip more than the 4 threaded 3200G. But if you're strapped for cash, then either chip makes a great start to a gaming build, and would even let you skip the GPU and save the cash instead. On top of that, you're also buying into the AM4 platform, which is honestly one of the best value sockets currently available thanks to the massive array of processors that are available for it. However, if you're going to be plugging in a discrete graphics card, then the Ryzen 5 3600 is an excellent alternative for a similar price as the previously mentioned 3400G. Along with the loss of integrated graphics with the 3600, you're also gaining the Zen 2 cores, rather than Zen Plus, which brings a notable improvement in overall clock-per-clock -clock efficiency, along with a larger pool of on dot cache. Now, this sort of thing brings us into the 60Hz and beyond spectrum, as the 3600 is beyond capable of 120 and even 144Hz gameplay. Basically anything that an 8700K can do, this thing can do as well. It's an excellent value chip, but the price may be a turnoff, so let's bring it back down a bit. For $150, our next recommendation isn't exactly budget, but the performance more than makes up for it. And that's the i5-10400F and its little brother the $105 i3-10100. Like the Ryzen 5 3600, the i5 chip lacks integrated graphics, meaning you'll need to supply your own discrete solution. 
But on the CPU side of things, the chip is spec the same as and performs almost identically to an 8700K. And the only difference is that its clocks are just gimped a bit. The mentioned i3 also performs almost identically to a 7700K, so both these chips are very impressive for the price. Plus with this platform you leave yourself open to upgrading to a Comet Lake i7 or i9, or even a Rocket Lake chip if you wanted to when those become available. But keep in mind that Ryzen chips also exist, and the AM4 platform is compatible with several generations of chips, whereas LGA1200 is limited to just two. Alright, so I've recommended just a few chips, but let's go over some specific core configurations I think you should be looking for based on a particular use case. For strictly 1080p gaming at 60Hz, anywhere between 4 and 6 cores from the red or the blue team are more than enough to drive the task, with the Prosu recommended core configuration being at least 4 cores and 4 threads on modern Intel, and 4 cores and 8 threads on modern AMD. 1080p at 60Hz Plus requires a bit more juice, meaning that we'll have to up the core count to 6 cores and 6 threads on Intel, and 6 cores and 12 threads on AMD. And beyond that, in terms of resolution, you don't really need anything more than 6 cores for anything more than strictly gaming. If I were building a gaming machine in 2021, I would save some of the money on the CPU side of things and go with an i5 over the i7, then invest the save money back into my GPU because those things are ridiculously expensive. The same goes for Ryzen 5 over Ryzen 7, and this sort of segues into the next point. If you're gaming and doing some light content creation, then 8 cores and 8 threads on Intel is enough to get the job done, and 8 cores and 16 threads on AMD is more than enough. However, in this case, AMD is obviously the better choice. However, if you're a gamer by night and a hardcore VFX artist by day, that's where the high core count Ryzen 9s and Threadrippers come in, along with the many core Intel AGDT lineup. For 144Hz gaming at 60fps and beyond, 6 cores and 12 threads from either team is more than enough to get the job done. However, if you're doing some content creation along with gaming, that's where I would look for a processor packing an extra 2 cores, bringing our total back up to 8 cores and 16 threads. For 4K gaming at 60Hz and beyond, not gonna lie, which is exactly what I did on my i5-9600K, is where you'll want the extra cores, but you'd still be able to get by with 6 cores and 12 threads. Alright, so if there's a takeaway for this video, it's that while, yes, you don't want to cheap out on your processor, you also don't need to spend as much as you probably think. The old Intel adage of i3s for office and budget gaming, i5s for hardcore gaming, and i7s for YouTubers still rings relatively true. Hell, I'm even a living example of that. And for 2021, you really don't need more than 4 cores and 8 threads to game. 6 cores and 12 threads to game at 120Hz and beyond, and 4 cores and 16 threads to create as much content as you want. It's amazing how far we've come in the past few years going from quad-core multi-threaded chips being the flagship processors, to chips with 8 cores now being the new mid-range.